we were talking salary. about oh salary and then not having one and, yeah so uh, tips I did for agents who might be in a similar situation <laughs> i had a salary when i was an editorial assistant and my salary in 2003 was twenty eight thousand dollars a year which is the same salary a lot of people are getting now which i mean i don't know how people do it now it's really awful um i mean inflation wise that's got to be closer to what like 18 17 000, something much lower. i mean it's yeah it's like horrible like my I mean, the apartment I lived in, it was upper, you know, I lived in an Upper West Side three bedroom apartment with two friends from college and I paid $800 a month for my room. It was a $2,700 a month apartment, but that apartment went up to $4,500, but you know, in no time. So I don't know how anyone lives off of it, like, which is a huge barrier for entry. And of course, um, lends itself to more privileged kids with parents that can help out being the people who can take the jobs, which is perpetuating lack of diversity in the industry. I mean, I obviously fit into that privileged parent category myself, but you know, the fact that there are no raises like isn't improving anything. It's not making it easy for anybody to get by. So as an agent, it's a little different. Like there's different structures for getting paid. Some people do start as an assistant and then you are hopefully salaried at whatever agency you're at. Um, and paid a living wage. Um, I'm not 100% sure what those assistant salaries are, um, but there are a lot of agencies that are big enough that have full-time jobs, like in the you know doing contracts or doing foreign rights or you know other services within the agency that would merit a salary. Um, a lot of agents, as they grow, don't want to be on a salary because then they're not getting as much of the commission on the projects they sell. So over time, you know, the goal is to be making enough through your commissions that you can just live off your commissions. But it takes five solid years of being an agent before you're even making enough commissions. So, you know, like I could sell a bunch of books my first year of publishing, but like those checks come in small pieces, you're only getting a little bit of it at a time, it's not enough to live off of. Um, and you really need to get a few projects that start selling like books to consumers to give you something to float on. Um, so it can be really, really challenging. Yeah, I looked at a number of finance jobs that were financial advisor jobs that were relatively similar. There at least it was usually uh, first year salary, second year half salary, right. third year, hope hope you're good at this or we probably fired you anyway. <laughs> yeah, my brother does financial stuff too. And it's like, you know, he went from, he's basically gone from nothing to nothing to nothing, but like, you know, building a portfolio and, you know, taking that percentage. So it's tough, like, and truthfully does, you kind of need to have a client that hits big enough to help you. And not everybody gets that. Um, and it can take a while to find that person. So it's not without its stresses. Like I've been doing this long enough and I have enough clients and I also have, you know, one tent pole, very successful client, uh, Kira Cass on the YA side. So that's afforded me a stability and you know but it's it's cyclical like that series peaked and it's backlisted which is awesome but like we need you know i'm would never complain about having another temple client <laughs> like you know the number of things that coming out that like we all hope they hit really big it's just it's publishing's really unpredictable what Oh, so many questions for you on the back of that. One thing I've, I've been uh, big on is wondering why so much of publishing is still centralized in Manhattan, where it does absolutely create this issue yeah. of only the uh, privileged that can afford to get into it are there. Um, now that you're not no longer in New York, obviously you cut your teeth, you made the connections you need right. to take with you to where you're at now, but how could... Um, is it possible for agents to uh, get established without paying those Manhattan uh, prices? Yeah, I think it's just a little harder. I mean, you still need to be somewhat roped into the industry. So there are agents that start out elsewhere. Um, you know, I've actually met a few this weekend at the Michigan Writers Workshop I went to on Saturday. But it is tough, you know, like it's you can do the job over email and phone. And I know a lot of people who do, but you have to be like really committed. You know, like you have to like, you have to really, you know, be able to cold call and reach out and introduce yourself. And, you know, I do hope most of those people have some editorial background or some, some way they've taught themselves to know how the industry works, to have editorial, you know, skills and, and everything else. Um, I, historically, agenting is a very apprenticeship based job. Like you, 
you learn from somebody, you know, like you are taught, you don't have to have a degree or, you know, it's, you build up to it over time. Um, so I am always a little wary of people who come out of nowhere, but you know, it depends who you're working for. Like some of the, some, you could start from another city and be working for an agent with a great reputation who's got great connections, in which case you have a mentor and that's awesome. Um, I started there and then left for Michigan three years ago. So, you know, I, everything, it's easy for me to do my job from here because I feel like I already know what I'm doing. Um, not starting from scratch. I mean, it's doable. I mean, publishing is based there because that's historically where the companies just are. It's not exclusively there. There are cities that have, you know, some more, like the, Boston has Candlewick and Charles Bridge and other publishers. San Francisco has Chronicle and some, you know, the heart used to be Harper offices out there. Like there are other places you can be and be an editor. It's harder for the editors. Like they really get stuck in Manhattan. Um, agents have more flexibility and can take it wherever they want to. Yeah, we've got Wiley Publishing and um, Tanglewood Press, of course, here in Indiana. Right. So yeah, awesome. I mean, there are plenty of places where there's other stuff. There's a few outfits in Chicago. Sourcebooks is based just outside of Chicago. So you can be other places, but there are just way fewer jobs. So it's harder to, to find something. <laughs> 